The U.S. is testing a new, super-powerful laser on the world's most expensive ship. A short time ago, we heard that the U.S. Congress sent the $13 billion Gerald Ford aircraft carrier to the Mediterranean Sea because of the dangerous situation in Israel. Now we have information that it's there that the United States is testing its new deadly laser, which they've been carefully keeping quiet about. The Pentagon has taken a rather clever approach. As you know, Israel has its own laser weapon, the Iron Beam, and it's the only such system that's being tested directly on a real battlefield. After all, where else can you truly evaluate the power of laser weapons if not in real conditions? The United States could not miss this opportunity and installed a large laser system with a capacity of 500 kilowatts on the USS Gerald R. Ford. Why is this innovation so important? And how does a laser weapon work? We'll tell you in a moment. Energy weapons have long attracted attention. Long before the advent of lasers, there were many myths associated with them. A long time ago, the developers created systems that were primarily aimed at destroying enemy drones and missiles. But now these systems can even cope with fighters and tanks. We can just fire using, using a laser weapon and have on our platforms is potentially going to be much cheaper. High energy laser systems used for military purposes are based on solid state lasers with special crystals for converting electrical energy into photons. We think you've seen how light passing through a glass pyramid splits and looks like a rainbow? In lasers, this process is reversed. When that first laser, uh, the Tysafar laser was demonstrated to be able to make sh short pulses, 60 femtosecond pulses, nobody understood the mechanism. One of their key characteristics is that the light particles are generated in the infrared part of the spectrum and are not visible to the eye, making the location of the firing source quite hidden. Simply put, a laser is also useful because it's not as easy to spot as anti-aircraft guns or missiles. But how can lasers destroy targets? It's easy. When a laser beam collides with an object, different reactions occur depending on the wavelength, beam power, and surface property. The distance between the emitter and the target is also important. Low-power lasers that emit visible light are used in entertainment shows and as signs. They're so weak that they only reflect off the surface without causing any damage. But more powerful lasers can cut through biological tissue, heat metal surfaces up to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, disable electronics, or even cut metal. Everybody was very excited by that ability. It follows that the interest in laser weapons is due to their destructive power. One of the key advantages of this weapon is its infinite capacity. Unlike traditional weapons such as anti-aircraft guns, which require reloading, a laser can fire as long as electrical power is supplied. An example of successful lasers is the Striker. The U.S. Army has installed a 50-kilowatt high-energy laser on an infantry fighting vehicle and has obtained an excellent mobile anti-drone weapon. Moreover, the Navy has also deployed ship-based lasers. For example, in 2022, a 60-kilowatt laser weapon was installed on the USS Preble Destroyer, and now the USS Gerald R. Ford is already equipped with a 500-kilowatt machine capable of destroying fighter jets. I'd say there are two advantages. One, the cost per kill, the recovering is, is low, and the second is that there is no ammunition. But such weapons have their drawbacks. One of the main problems with military lasers is the high power required to hit targets at long distances. Unlike industrial lasers, which can be located in close proximity to a target, combat operations require operation at much longer distances. To defend against close threats, such as mortar shells or small boats, laser weapons need to hit the target before it can do any damage. For burning solid materials over long distances, significant power is required, hundreds of kilowatts. Even the smallest prototype laser weapon consumes 10 kilowatts of power, about the same as an electric car. However, since the efficiency of high-energy lasers is usually less than 50%, they generate a huge amount of heat that must be effectively dissipated. The One is a short range, the other is a uh, sensitivity to weather, and the third is a low kill rate. Laser weapons typically require infrastructure for power generation and cooling, making them impossible to install in many locations. Military trucks and fighters have limited space, so they can only be equipped with small systems capable of shooting down drones and missiles. 
That's why the United States chose the huge USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier, which has enough space for a system capable of damaging boats and land vehicles to install the powerful gun. This is facilitated by the aircraft carrier's nuclear generators, which provide enough energy for a 500-kilowatt laser. The most powerful are ground-based systems which have fewer restrictions and can occupy more space, receive more power, and potentially attack even space satellites. Is at the leading edge, not just in technology, but in demonstrating the end-to-end -end capability and inform the UK's future procurement. Despite so many advantages and capabilities, laser systems are highly dependent on weather conditions. Rain, fog, and smoke can scatter laser beams, reducing their effectiveness. The United States is testing DM Showrad systems in the Middle East in such conditions. In addition to cause significant damage, lasers need to impact the target for several seconds. But an aircraft carrier's laser takes only one second to send an enemy fighter off to explore the depths of the ocean. What about onshore? Are there any interesting developments there? As we've already mentioned, Israel has the Iron Beam, a development by Rafael, and it's a perfect example of a ground-based laser weapon. It was first presented at an exhibition in Singapore in 2014 and successfully passed a series of tests in 2022. Initially, it was planned to be implemented in stages until 2027, but as a result of a series of terrorist attacks committed by Hamas in October 2023, the Iron Beam system was adopted and promptly put into operation. The system includes a radar, a control unit, and 250-kilowatt laser guns with a range of 4 miles, which is currently a record for ground-based systems. However, Iron Beam is not a universal solution so far. Its purpose is to become an additional element in the multi-level missile defense system of Israel. That is a fundamental change for laser weapon systems, which here to date have been prototypes. There are also interesting examples in the United States. As we've already mentioned, in early 2023, the U.S. Army received the first prototypes of the latest 60-kilowatt laser systems. The DM Showrad system was installed on a Stryker armored personnel carrier. In 2021, a contract was signed with Raytheon for the development and deployment of these systems worth $123 million, and this contract is now in the final stages of implementation. The DM Showrad contains 60-kilowatt laser systems, radars, laser beam control systems, and target sensors, and the striker with this gun is capable of shooting down drones in a bunch. Another attractive development is being carried out by the Raytheon Defense Company. It demonstrated the operation of the Hellwiz MRZR mobile laser system this year, destroying an unmanned aerial vehicle with a laser beam. The name of the system consists of two parts. Hellwiz stands for High Energy Laser Weapon System. The MRZR is a model of Polaris ATV equipped with a laser gun and a multi-spectral targeting system. We have the opportunity to uh... Uh, fire high-energy lasers and go against targets. Although the Polaris MRZR ATV must be stationary to destroy a moving target, Raytheon claims that this is a temporary limitation and engineers will soon develop the option of firing the laser system on the move. The mobile power source allows for up to 30 laser shots on a single battery charge. During the test, the specialist attacked an unmanned aerial vehicle, which proved the high efficiency of this development, especially given the mobility of the ATV on which the lasers installed. In fact, any car can now become a drone killer, which in the current military realities looks like huge progress. We have a beam director uh, on top of the vehicle. This finally changes the approach to air defense in real combat conditions. The landmark event occurred due to the high cost of the Iron Dome and will allow for more effective repulsion of all types of attacks on Israel in the near future. While laser weapons are becoming more common among Western allies, China and its allies have nothing to counter them. But is laser technology really that powerful? The idea of laser weapons came to the military from the entertainment industry. With the advent of the first developments in the 60s, comic book and movie creators showed colorful blaster shots lightsabers, and other weapons that seemed universal and stirred the imagination of military engineers. The first practical attempts to use lasers as an independent type of weapon took place in the early 2000s and looked like a laser installation attached to the bow of a Boeing 747. This set the development vector for what we see now. Israel's making great progress and is even getting paid for it.
The United States has announced that it'll provide Israel with $1.2 billion for laser weapons under the Iron Beam program. When you push the button, your beam touches the rocket at the speed of light. Why is this so? It's simple. Such investments will save money for the United States itself. High-energy laser weapons offer a significant economic advantage. Each shot costs up to $1,000, in contrast to the estimated cost of the Tamir interceptor missile used in the Iron Dome missile defense system, which costs between forty dollars and $50,000. I would say around 90% of the interceptions we wanted to make, we make, but still there's too many rockets raining down here. Initially, the laser system was planned to be adopted by the IDF in 2025. However, the current situation calls for the process to be accelerated. In 2022, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett announced the country's plan to create a laser wall to move from spending money on a large number of interceptors to using less expensive lasers. I'd say there are two advantages. One, the cost per kill, the recovery is, is low. And the second is that there is no ammunition. And in April 2022, the Magan Or system successfully intercepted mines, missiles, and anti-tank missiles during tests in the Negev Desert. In February 2023, the Iron Beam project, which includes Magan Or, was presented at the IDEX Defense Exhibition in the United Arab Emirates. However, Israeli experts emphasize the technological difficulties that lasers face when dealing with large missile volleys, as lasers need time to heat up the target and destroy it. For example, to destroy a missile, a laser may need to hit the target continuously for two to three seconds. In addition, the iron beam is not immune to the general problems inherent in laser weapons. One is a short range, the other is uh, the sensitivity to weather, and the third is the low kill rate. The war between Israel and Hamas has shown that the militants have potentially doubled the rate of missile fire compared to the war they fought in May 2021, and the speed and range are critical. The range is limited. It's more limited than uh, the range of uh, interceptor weapons. And not only Israel faced this problem, continuous attacks on U.S. bases in Iraq led to the deployment of the first operational laser weapon system, three striker armored fighting vehicles armed with 50 kilowatt lasers known as DM Showrads are already countering drones that have caused losses to the U.S. military. The DM Showrads is intended to provide air defense for ground forces, protecting them from drones. The entire 50 kilowatt laser system weighs about seven tons and when mounted on a striker, it receives armored protection in a maximum speed of 62 miles per hour. The system is controlled by a secure laptop, and the operator uses an Xbox-style controller to control the fire. The use of lasers has several advantages over existing drone countermeasures. Unlike gun or missile systems, a laser theoretically has an unlimited number of shots, limited only by the access of the system to electricity. The lasers travel at the speed of light and do not require guidance to intercept a target. The system will also not suffer from electronic warfare interference. The DM Showrad systems are not only capable of engaging drones, but also capable of destroying enemy shells in flight. This is the first ever system capable of intercepting enemy artillery shells in the air before they hit the ground. Compared to the Israeli laser, this one looks a bit more advanced and sophisticated. However, not everything is so perfect as well. Substances in the atmosphere, especially water vapor as well as sand, dust, salt particles, smoke, and other air pollutants absorb and scatter light, and atmospheric turbulence can defocus the laser beam. While work is ongoing to improve land-based technologies, surface lasers are already actively performing combat missions. Shipboard lasers such as the 60-kilowatt Helios with an integrated optical occluder and surveillance system can significantly reduce the impact of atmospheric water vapor on laser performance by operating only at hot spots in the electromagnetic spectrum. But other phenomena such as dust storms do not yet have such a convenient solution. Although where dust storms come from in the sea is a matter of debate. Currently, the U.S. Navy has one San Antonio-class amphibious transport ship equipped with a 150-kilowatt MK-2 Mod Zero laser weapon demonstrator. Eight Arleigh Burke-class destroyers are also equipped with the Odin Optical Dazzle system, and one Arleigh Burke-class destroyer is equipped with the well-known 60-kilowatt high-energy laser with the Helios Integrated Optical Dazzle and Surveillance System. Some of these systems are already in active use and are helping to repel attacks in the Middle East which significantly reduces the cost of air defense. 
However, the United States always wants more and is actively working on a powerful 300 kilowatt Hellcap laser. It differs from previous systems in that it will engage not only UAVs but also anti-ship cruise missiles. The U.S. Navy initiated Hellcap in 2019 after completing the first phase of the ruggedized high-energy laser program. The main purpose of Hellcap is to serve as a building block for future programs by solving technical problems. The effort to build and develop technology through separate programs designed to meet specific technology challenges will culminate when these program elements are combined into the laser weapons testbed that's central to the Hellcap. The basis of the test prototype of the laser weapon will be a 300 plus kilowatt laser. That is a fundamental change for laser weapon systems, which here to date have been prototypes. After the completion of testing of the main components and subsystems, the Navy will begin testing the system against targets of increasing complexity. At the initial stage, the system will be tested on static ground targets, then on dynamic targets, and then move on to intercepting low-cost unmanned aerial vehicles and cruise missiles. Israel has not reached such a level yet, but who knows what $1.2 billion can do. However, in the laser world, the United States and Israel have another competitor, or should I say ally, who's also ready to revolutionize the world of weapons. The UK has demonstrated a new laser weapon that the military says can provide effective missile or air defense at a cost of about $13 per shot. So Dragonfire's uh, laser directed energy weapon demonstrator. A recently released video from a test of what the UK Ministry of Defense calls Dragonfire, a directed energy laser weapon system, captured the successful use of a laser against an airborne target. It's potentially a game changer for air defense, says the video, which shows a bright laser beam piercing the night sky over a training range in the remote Hebrides archipelago, creating a ball of light when it hits its target. The British Ministry of Defense claims that Dragonfire can accurately hit a coin-sized target at long distances, but does not provide specifics. The exact range of the weapon is classified. We can just fire using, using a laser weapon and have on our platforms is potentially going to be much cheaper. The laser beam can cut through metal, leading to structural failure or more destructive consequences. It's also claimed to destroy targets at a fraction of the cost of modern air defense missiles. The Ministry of Defense has estimated the cost of a 10-second laser shot at about $13. For comparison, a standard missile used by the U.S. Navy for air defense costs more than $2 million. And perhaps this weapon has already been used in combat, because Dragonfire's participation in repelling Iranian attacks on Israel and protecting the Red Sea is being actively discussed by experts. And something tells me that this is true and is at the leading edge, not just of technology, but in demonstrating the end-to-end -end capability and inform the UK's future procurement. Given the current pace of development of laser technology, in a few years, we'll see the massive use of these systems and the gradual retreat of air defense systems into the background. And we hope that by the time these weapons will not fall into the hands of crazed dictators. Thank you for watching, and see you soon!